A good question to ask that may have um, come up in your mind is, well, we've been talking about prime numbers. How many prime numbers are there? So you could think, well, prime numbers become more and more rare. If you remember um, looking at that sieve of Eratosthenes, um, as we were going, there was a lot of primes kind of at the start, but by the time we got to around 100, there were fewer primes. And that pattern holds as numbers go off to infinity. Primes get more and more rare. And you can th that kind of makes sense, right? Because you're crossing off more and more uh, multiples of these primes. So you think ones that aren't crossed off will be more and more rare. But will it ever be the case that we'll cross off all numbers past a certain point? And the answer is no. There will always be numbers that don't get crossed off doing the sieve of Aristophanes. So there are infinitely many primes. And now I'm going to show you a method, an algorithm. An algorithm is just a mathematical jargon for a series of steps, or a recipe, if you will. That's all an algorithm is. just tells you what to do. So this algorithm will give you an infinite set of primes. It won't give you all primes, but it'll give you infinitely many of them, which is really cool. And if we have infinitely many, but we don't have all of them, well, then all of them must be infinitely many, of course. So, here's the algorithm. I'll explain it, and then we'll do a few steps of it, so you can see how it works. Okay, so we'll start with a set P, and I'm just going to put one prime number in it, and I'll, I'll pick two. Really, you could do this with any prime number you like, but let's take the smallest prime, just to make our life easy. Okay, so we're going to multiply all elements of P together, but I guess there's only one element in here, so it doesn't make sense yet, but you'll see what's going to happen. So we multiply all elements of P, well, right now it's just two, and then add one. So 2 plus 1 is 3. And 3, well, that's either a prime number or it's a product of primes not in P already. And I'll try and convince you of that fact a little bit later. So doing that procedure where I multiply everything in P and add 1 to that product, that's going to give us new primes. So we're going to add that to our set P. So I, in this case, I would add 3 to P. And then I would continue. I would go to 1. Notice this algorithm is an infinite loop. You start at, one, well, you start at 0 because you need a set to start with. And then you do step 1, step 2, and step 3 says go to step 1. There's no way to say um, when to leave this algorithm. It just loops infinitely often. So you can keep applying this algorithm to come up with more and more prime numbers. So let me show you what's going on here. Okay. So let's do step one. So step one, I'm going to start with that prime two. I'm going to add one to it. And that gives me three. And I know that, well, 3 isn't divisible by 2, it has remainder 1. So this clearly, 3 divided by 2 equals something, but it has remainder 1. In fact, it's 1 remainder 1, but the important part is it has a remainder, so I know it's not divisible by 2. It's not divisible by a prime already in my set. Okay, so step 2 says, okay, I am going to add that prime to my set. So P is now 2 and 3. Okay. Step 3 says go back to step 1. So step 3 takes me to step 1. My set P has changed. So now I'm going to take all the primes in P. Now there's two of them. Multiply them together. And add 1. Well... If we look at this, of course, this is 6 plus 1, which is 7. But I can show you, and or it's kind of easy to see, in fact. I don't need to show you that 
Well, this isn't divisible by 2. It's not divisible by 3. Since, well, each of those has a remainder of 1. So if I do this number here, 7 divided by 2, well, that's going to be, it. here's 2 times 3. In fact, let me write it like this. I'm going to write it as 7 is 2 groups of 3 plus 1, or 7 is 3 groups of 2 plus 1. We can just use the commutative property here to order things however I like, but we're always going to have a remainder of 1. That's the key. If I divide this number that I'm making by any number in my set here, it's going to have remainder 1. Okay, so I get this new number, and in fact is, of course, 7. So I'm going to add that to my set. So now I have 2, 3, and 7. Okay, step 3 says, okay, go back to step 1, do it again. So let's take all the numbers inside of our set P and multiply them together. 2 times 3 times 7, and then add 1. Well, I know that this number here, whatever this is, I'm just going to call this n. So I don't have to keep calculating this. I know that n is going to be 2 times 3 times 7 plus 1. So it's 2 groups of 21 plus 1, or 21 groups of 2, in fact, however you want to look at it. But my point is, n divided by 2, this number divided by 2, has a remainder of 1. Maybe I'll write it like that. That's probably a little more clear. n divided by 2 equals something, but we have a remainder of 1. doesn't matter what that something is. It's 21, in fact, because here's our 2, so what's left over here is 21. Let's write that in just to have it. It's not that important. And if we divide it by 3, hey, we still get a remainder of 1. And this time, well, here's our 3. So um, it's 3 times 14, 2 times 7. Again, that bit's not that important. We just care that we ha always have a remainder of 1. Because that's how we built up the number. It's 1 more than a multiple of 2 a multiple of 3, and a multiple of 7. So it's going to have remainder 1 equals something 6, remainder 1. So we can calculate this now. This is 2 times 3 times 7 is 42, plus 1 is 43. So you can check 43 is indeed prime, so we're going to add that to our set. And I'll do one more iteration of this. So we're going to add this new prime, 43. And we'll talk about how to determine how a number is prime or not. This one was kind of easy because um, we could look at our page with the sieve of Eratosthenes and see that, hey, that was one of those circled numbers. So we have these new, or this new prime to add to our set. 43. So step three says go back to step one. Okay, let's do that. Let's do it again. Take all our numbers in our set 2, 3, 7, and 43. Multiply them together. Add one to the product. Let's again, let's call this n. So again, well, this is one more. This is a multiple of 2, 3, 7, and 43. And if I add 1 to it, it's 1 more than a multiple of 2, 3, 7, and 43. So we're always going to have a remainder of 1. So n divided by 2 has a remainder of 1. n divided by 3 has a remainder 1. n divided by 7 has a remainder 1. And n divided by 43 has a remainder of 1. So it's not divisible by any of the primes I already have, because it always has a remainder of 1. I built it up as being a multiple 
of all of these things except one more than it. So they'll always have a remainder of one if I divide it by any of the primes in my set. So this number here, I'll tell you that 2 times 3 times 7 is 42. 42 times 43, you can check, is 1,806. And then we add 1, that's 1,807. So that's our number. Now, this, in fact, is not prime. This is a composite number. And we'll talk about, um, later on in the next video, a good way of determining that. But just for now, I'll give you its factors. 1,807 could be written as 13 times 139. Both of those numbers, in fact, are prime. So we'll add that to our set. So now our set P consists of the primes 2, 3, 7. I'm going to write them in numerical order. So 13 goes next, then 43, then 139. And then step three says, go back to step one and just repeat ad nauseum, repeat forever. You can see every time we run through this algorithm, once you do steps one, two, and three, P becomes bigger. We're always adding at least one number to P. Sometimes we add more than one number to P. That's okay too, but we're just building up um, a new number to add to P by multiplying all of our elements of P and then adding one. And we know that number isn't divisible by any of the numbers here because it's a multiple of these, but one more than it. So you'll always get a remainder of one if you divide it by any of these. So it's not divisible by 2, 3, 7, 13, 43, or 139. So it's either going to be prime or it's going to ha be a factor of primes we don't already have in our set. That's always going to hold. Add those primes to your set and repeat. So, the last thing I want to talk about, and just for a second, I'll leave it as a challenge problem for you guys. And it's kind of a fun one, but it's hard. I will say it's hard. So, show you do not guess all primes being elements of P. So, you could think, well, maybe every prime will eventually show up. If I keep doing this, maybe there'll be like a really large number that'll have five as a factor. So five will eventually appear in here. But I'll tell you, it doesn't. In fact, that's the one that I want you to kind of think about showing. So show five will never appear in P. And the way to think about it, I'll tell you the best way to think about it. Think about the ones digit of all the numbers that you're making, except two. Two is the only one that um, we don't really care about. But think about the ones digit that you get when you multiply all these together and add one. It's I, I will say it's a very tough problem. So take it as a challenge if you're so inclined.